Hey guys, it's your boy Arj back with another Dragon Ball Super Theory and Analysis video and today could very well be groundbreaking if you listen and understand each point I make today. So definitely I recommend staying right through to the end for this one. We will be looking deeply into the Great Saiyan War that led to the destruction of planet Sadala and how it relates to everything, literally everything. And trust me, if you do truly listen to this, your mind may very well be blown. But before we begin guys, if you're new here, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to enter our PS4 Pro giveaway with a copy of Dragon Ball Fighters. Only 18 days left and one of you guys will be selected, so join the gang today. But moving on, if it was not obvious already to you what the Great Saiyan War of Sodala is, we need to look back to this scene when Vegeta first met Kaba, and Kaba told him that he was from Planet Sadala but from Universe 6. Vegeta was understandably shocked as we all know from Dragon Ball Law, Universe 7 Saiyans also had a Sadala, but it was destroyed by what was used to be known as an internal conflict until now. In the latest English dub we hear Vegeta say, That's right. What we call our birth world was destroyed in a civil war. After its decimation, we conquered another planet and called it Vegeta. A civil war. And in the Japanese version, it is described as a quarrel. Somehow, when considering the planet was completely destroyed, we can consider this more than just a quarrel, but a full-blown civil war, just as Vegeta said, among Saiyans of two factions. A plot point which will no doubt be featured in the upcoming Dragon Ball Super movie which has been marketed as covering the origin of the Saiyans. But there are some huge questions here that no one has thought to ask, like the major one. Who were these two rival factions of Saiyans and what were they even fighting over? And there's the fact, how did they even manage to destroy their planet, somehow yet still manage to transport thousands if not millions of Saiyans to the new planet later to be called Planet Vegeta. Well for one, we know that one of the factions would have been the descendant of Vegeta himself, the Royal Vegeta bloodline, perhaps his grandfather or great grandfather, who would have led one side against another, and upon winning and leaving the planet was then left to rule over the new Saiyan home, thus naming it after himself. But who were the other Saiyan faction? Were they part of another royal Saiyan bloodline or did they have a difference in opinion on how the future of the Saiyan race should thrive? We know that the King Vegeta faction were bloodthirsty warriors who loved the thrill of a fight, dominating worlds and killing for the sake of money, even being enlisted as basic mercenaries for the likes of Frieza. But what if the opposing faction from long ago were different. Perhaps they were Saiyans who were not evil Saiyans, but Saiyans who knew they could thrive and survive and enjoy fighting without the need of senseless destruction and murder of other beings. What if the other Saiyans were just like the Saiyans of Universe 6? Yes, Universe 6 is an alternate twin universe, a universe where Sadala still remains and a universe where perhaps Either the civil war never took place or it took place and the opposing faction won. Hence why the Saiyans of Universe 6 are not bloodthirsty or evil and in fact heroes of their universe. And now all of this is all very good as a theory on its own but there's even more evidence to support this in the facts that we know already. The Universe 6 Saiyans as we all know are just inexplicably and undeniably much stronger than the Saiyans we knew that existed on planet Vegeta. Not only are their talents for achieving new transformations simply incredible, but even before all of that, Kaba just as a child and in base form could go toe to toe with Vegeta, equaling the power of Vegeta who has trained his whole life. And we know this of course through Vegeta saying it himself they matched each other in Super Saiyan form and since we know Super Saiyan is simply a multiplier of power, their base forms would also match as well. 
but if the opposing faction of Saiyans are somehow related to the universe 6 Saiyans who possess this incredible natural power, how did they lose to the downright weak Saiyans of the Vegeta faction? Well for one, it's not like we know they fought one on one and the winning side was chosen by being the last one standing. What we know is that Sadala was destroyed, blown up, yet the Vegeta faction of Saiyans were still able to escape and only them. And that downright suggests they had planned this beforehand. The Vegeta faction of Saiyans having known that they simply could not match the power of these universe 6 like Saiyans instead got rid of them in a way that was absolute by destroying the very planet they were on and escaping before it happened thus surviving and erasing all trace of the previously much more powerful Saiyans. Now keep that idea in your head about the planned murder of these powerful Saiyans when thinking about how the two new confirmed ancient Saiyans that have appeared seemingly also have inexplicably high power levels. That number one allows them to face off against a Goku in Super Saiyan form while still in base form and number two allow for one to go toe to toe with base form Goku post the tournament of power and where we all know even Goku's base form is far 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 more powerful than any Saiyan we ever saw on planet Vegeta. These Saiyans are thought to be ancient Saiyans from none other than Universe 7 but look closely at how Shalot has the armour that Vegeta said used to be worn by the Saiyans of Sadala, very similar to Kabu's yet when we look at the clothing of the Saiyans who did in fact survive under the Vegeta faction, this is before they were under the rule of Frieza, we see that their clothing is far far different, thus strengthening the idea that these two separate factions existed and the one which did not survive were essentially of the same bloodline as the powerful Saiyans we see today in the alternate universe 6, hence explaining why the ancient Saiyans brought back are also so very powerful. Now what other evidence have I got? Well let me ask you a question as a Dragon Ball fan, have you ever wondered why a Saiyan race so obsessed with getting stronger and fighting would want to throw out to die a baby Broly who had a power level of 10,000 at birth, a power level that rivaled Bardock while he was still unable to even crawl? What reason would there be to dispose of him especially in an age where the Saiyans are slaves to Frieza? There is only one and that is fear, fear of Saiyans whose power is far beyond their own. Just as the Vegeta faction feared all those centuries ago the power of those lost Saiyans blowing them up in the most cowardly of ways to reign supreme, in the same way they attempted to murder a powerful baby Saiyan in the most cowardly of ways. Like it or not, everything so far in the Dragon Ball series from Z to Super and to the movie now seems to match up given these points and if it doesn't I implore you to re-watch this video and take down exactly what I'm saying. As many of my fans know by now that I have used these same analysis techniques many times before to predict entire episode plots and endings and I feel having just found this possible explanation to the power of the new Saiyans, the new ancient Saiyans, I may have uncovered the hidden truth, the dark truth behind the Saiyans we know today and how the Saiyans of Universe 6 went down such a completely different path. But yeah guys, that was it for today's Dragon Ball Super Theory and Analysis video, probably one of my favourite theories in my opinion, but certainly not my last. As always, I want to hear from you guys what you think of my latest theory. Am I onto something here regarding the Saiyan origins or do you have another idea? Let me know down below but before you guys go, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to enter our PS4 Pro giveaway with a copy of Dragon Ball Fighters. It ends in only 18 days, so no matter what, hit that button and join the gang today. Until next video guys, cheers.